Hey guys, what's going on? It's Nock. Welcome back to episode number five of my Minecraft Let's Play. I apologize for the noise outside. As you can see, we've got some rather noisy neighbors once again. Now, I know in the previous episode, I did mention that today I wanted to try and work on a villager farming kind of thing to bring the trades down for each of the villagers. But then I realized, actually, I'm not in a position to do that because I don't have all of the resources I need to actually be able to do that. So instead, what we're going to do today is we're going to head down into the nether and we're going to go and see if we can find ourselves a nether fortress. So have ourselves a bit of a nether exploration session today. Along the way, I guess we'll gather some resources. Hopefully we won't run into too many nasties, but by the end of it, I want to have some blaze rods from a nether fortress. This will allow me to start making potions, which is an essential part of my villager farm. So yeah, as you can see, we really need to do this before we do anything else. Another idea that came to mind for this episode was to go and try and find some slime chunks because I could really do with some sticky pistons for some contraptions that I want to build in future episodes. So before I get into today's episode, I just want to take a quick moment to go over what I've been doing in between episodes. We headed on over to the village and we lit up the roofs of the houses we moved in the previous episode just to eradicate any mob spawns on top of those roofs. We then traded with our farmers, making them both masters, unlocking the melon trade, which is great because now we can put our melon farm to real good use for emeralds. We purchased a fortune at two buck from our fortune villager and placed it on a brand new diamond pick. We then put it straight to use as we took all the ores we had in our chest from our silk top pickaxe outside of our base, stacked them real high in the air. And as you can see, there was quite a lot. We're quite hard in the air. It was then with great pleasure we actually got to just mow them all down from top to bottom. We collected everything off the floor, put it in a chest, and this is what we got. Quite a nice little haul that we was holding onto there. And finally, we headed back down into the mine because we are really struggling for iron right now. So we went on a resource gathering mission for only important stuff like iron, gold, the redstone, and diamonds. Okay, so I think it's about time to head on into the nether. We're going to take a flint and steel just in case our nether portal gets destroyed and then we can actually relight it from the other side. We're also going to swap out our helmet here for a gold one, which will hopefully protect us from any zombie pigmen, piglins. I almost forgot what they were called them. They're piglins. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. I do notice though, since I've spawned into this area and I've started doing some bits and pieces in here there has been a lot of pigmen spawning okay so wise thing to do take a note of coordinates 44 minus 58 that way i know where i'm coming back to if i get lost so i've turned off the fog just to kind of get a bit of a better look at what we're dealing with here in the nether just to see if we can see anything of interest but i have to say at the minute i don't see any nether fortresses around here man there are a lot of endermen here what what why are you angered i don't understand why did i anger that enderman i have no idea so is this the crimson biome yeah, that's a crimson forest, okay. Pretty freaking scary, you know. You, you, you don't dare look up just in case there's an enderman sat somewhere that you're gonna aggro. Okay, we got success. I'm seeing a nether fortress. We've only been traversing the nether for about 10 minutes. I can see a blaze spawning over there and different bits and pieces. So I think the smart thing to do now would be to work out a safe way to get over to here. Now, I have cobble, but I really want to dig back towards my portal, which is not in this direction. So my portal is over in this direction. So a little bit over here and then all the way over there. So let me see if I can link up the portal or have a safish route to the portal 
and then we will look at going inside the fortress. There's something mildly satisfying about just wielding your pickaxe around in a circle like that. Whoops. Whew, that was close. I guess we need to we need to pay more attention to what we're doing. Nothing dangerous going on here. Nothing to see here. Move along, please. <laughs> Still got about another 200 blocks to go, so... Ugh, this could take some while. Okay, any moment now we should be popping out near our nether portal. So, where is my nether portal? 44 minus 58. Who stole my portal? Seriously, who stole my portal? Oh, I'm an idiot. Take two, we should be able to see our nether portal. Let's just imagine you didn't see anything right there. And so we have our first nether tunnel right there all the way through from our nether portal all the way to the nether fortress. So I'm gonna dump off all of this stuff I've just gathered in the nether from mining and then we will head back to the fortress and uh, we'll start exploring and see if we can get ourselves some blaze rods. Okay, so we're back at the nether fortress here, but I really don't know how to tackle this. I was going to build a bridge all the way across from here, but I feel if I build a bridge, I'm going to get absolutely annihilated. Also, there's a lot of blazes over there and some skeletons, so I almost think we've got to go around and maybe drop in from the top. Once that area is safe, we can potentially build a bridge. As you can probably tell from the height of my voice there, I'm really not sure what I'm doing here. I think if I can just get over here, then we'll be in a good position to... Pigman aggroed at me. I didn't hit him. Now I'm going to take my chance and build my tunnel across here. Wish me luck. And of course, by tunnel, I actually mean a bridge. Jackpot! So far, this nether fortress is relatively quiet, which is alarming. Hey, and he dropped a blaze rod. But I'm nowhere near getting it. Man, we are cashing in at the moment. Okay, we've got our first blaze rod. Huzzah. Jackpot. Okay, we have a blaze spawner. Success. Another blaze spawner. Today's episode, Nock tries to put golden nuggets on a monster spawner and fails miserably. Shock horror. So we have five blaze rods now. I'll put torch here and a torch here just to indicate to myself that there are spawners in those directions. I'm so glad I have a torch system. <laughs> Despite thinking it failed in the first episode of my mining, it's, um, it's serving me well. All right, guys, we are back from our nether exploration and I have made up a brewing stand and brought it over. Oh, hi there. And brought it over to the village. As I said before, I really want a cleric villager. So come on, Mr. Nitwit. Come round. Come round. 
please do come around the market stall. Okay, so we are here with our brand new cleric and he takes rotten flesh, which is, is pretty good. If I can find a zombie spawner, then we can turn it into a rotten flesh generator and do some trading with this guy. But let's get this guy kicked off here with some basic trade. Just want to see what else he's going to have to offer on level two, which he should now be changing any moment. Okay. We can trade in some gold bars for him to level him up a bit more. So that's pretty good. I really want him to have the Ender Pearl trade, just so I can easily get Eyes of Ender later on down the line. So having done some trading with these villagers, I think the next step is to head back to the base and we're going to start working on finding a slime chunk. Now this is going to take quite some time. We've got quite a bit of digging to do and I don't have a Haze 2 beacon. So it's going to take a lot of work, but Let's head back to the base and I will explain how we're going to do this. Okay guys, so as I previously mentioned, I'm going to be looking for a slime chunk. Now I'm going to be basing this on Shulker Craft's demonstration, whereby we dig down to level 7 and then dig out about nine or so slime chunks slime chunks appear in about 10 percent of chunks hopefully we'll be really lucky but maybe i will dig more than nine chunks out however before we can go down there we need to gather some wood we're pretty much out of logs and we need a lot and i mean a lot of fence panels here to mark out the slime chunks once we get down below so let's head on out into our orchard and uh chop down some trees Wood supplies replenished and we've got about a stack and a quarter now of oak and almost three stacks of birch logs to work with. So now that we've got that, we need to craft up a lot of fence posts. Now I can't remember the exact crafting recipe for fence posts. Do I need sticks? Yes, I do. Now the bad news for me is I need about 192 fences for a three by three chunk area, I believe. <sighs> this is gonna be expensive. Actually, it wasn't as expensive as I thought. So we used all of our oak logs pretty much, but we have got five stacks of fences here, which gives us 320 fence, so more than enough. I'm sure we can find use for the leftovers at a later date. So we've got our chests and all that's left now, I guess, is to head down into our mine to level seven, and then I can explain exactly what we're gonna do. Okay, so we're down here in the mine. That level down there is level seven. That's where we need to be. But first and foremost, I need to turn on chunk borders, and we're actually gonna see where we need to dig. So you can see the chunk borders here. Uh, actually, I'm right on a chunk border, which is really quite nice so the idea is we're going to dig at least nine maybe more because we have more fence posts uh, of these chunks out three high and then we're going to place fence posts but i'll get to the fence posts once we're ready for it but this is going to take quite some time <sighs> so uh let's jump into a time lapse and uh let's see how long this actually takes us
Okay, guys, we have finished our slime chunk identification area. We've dug a three by three chunk area out here. So yeah, that took quite a while to do, I'll be honest, but it's all done now. And now we can move on to the next step, which is going to be placing the fence post, which I think I put in this chest here while I was busy doing different bits and pieces. So the idea here is we're going to mark out the individual chunks and then hopefully we can identify which one is slime chunk if slimes begin to spawn within them. So we're just going to go along here and put these fence posts down and then we can find a nice spot hopefully to do some afk fingers crossed we'll get to find out where our slime chunks are okay i've placed all my fences now what we've got to do is dig into the wall here and then we've got to afk for a little bit just to see if any of these nine chunks give us slime i really hope they do because this has taken a very long time to dig out and set up i can really understand why they recommend using a haste 2 beacon just to speed things up but when you don't have things like haste 2 beacons and you need to gather some resources the thing about minecraft is that's when you need to put the time and the effort in so we're going to dig into the wall here this is 512. We need to dig about 40 to 50 blocks into here. So if we dig 40 this way, that will take us to negative 472. So I'm going to dig my way through here and uh, I'll see you once I have placed all the blocks. I've dug just over 40 blocks in and I've put a nice little diorite block here so I can stand on just to AFK out of the way. Now, the only thing about this is that there is no time limit associated with how quickly the slime is going to spawn. If, of course, one of those chunks over there is a slime chunk indeed. So we just got to hang around for a bit in the hope that slime starts to spawn. I'll run out there occasionally just to see if we do have any slimes. So fingers crossed for me, guys, that this is going to be profitable and hopefully I'll come back to you real soon showing you some slime spawned in one of those areas. Okay, guys. So let me just give you a quick update of where we are. I AFK down that tunnel for the best part of two hours, kept coming out periodically just to see what was going on, maybe even more than two hours, and nothing happened. So I did a bit of research and did some looking around, and I did see a comment on a forum that said, Slime rates are affected if you have torches on the ground. So I went around and I put all these torches in the ceiling thinking, okay, well, we'll give it a go. We'll see what happens. And I was actually over in one of these two areas over here, taking the torches off the floor and put them in the ceiling. And I turned around and we had a slime. We had a slime. Hallelujah. So yes, we have found our slime chunk it is this one right here hey and there's our first slime balls oh yeah oh yeah so yeah this one right here is our slime chunks so i'm going to put a block right here just so i know that this is my chunk now i think i've done enough down here in this slime chunk finding endeavor in today's episode so next episode we will be building the slime farm digging up as far as we need to go adding everything else in here which should be really really exciting indeed i just didn't really want to spend any more time on today's episode because i have spent a lot of time digging this area out down here so yeah that will be the next episode we'll concentrate on this also i just want to say i think i really misunderstood the instructions because i have still got a ton of fence posts and I think the 190 odd that was referenced in the video that I was watching to plan all this out, maybe the total number of fence posts required for the whole farm as opposed to just planning out this area. But I'll come down here in between episodes and start chopping down these fences because we don't need these at all. Also in a, a, another episode, I want to build some sort of elevator up to the surface just so I can transport items. I think that's going to be the easiest way to get all of these items back up there without using shulker boxes which we don't have at the moment so that's something we'll look at in a few episodes time it's nothing of major importance for now but right now i need to find my way out of here i think the exit's around here we're going to head to the surface and um in celebration of finding our slime chunk i thought i want to also see if i can uh, get some honey going
Maybe we can build ourselves a little quick bee farm. I've never really done anything with bees in Minecraft. So this should be exciting. Let me head back up to the surface and uh, we will go from there. Okay, so we're out here in my orchard. As you may have noticed when I've been harvesting trees, I've been keeping well clear of these ones over here because they have beehives. So I didn't want to disturb the beehives until I actually knew what I wanted to do with them. But now I think I know what I want to do. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to take these, hopefully, with a silk touch pick. I know I should really use an axe. Excellent. Okay, so now I have two beehives. And what I plan to do with these beehives is I am going to create one farm that creates honeycomb and one farm that creates honey bottles, just so I have a difference between the two. Now, the only thing I'm unsure of here is whether or not these beehives have any bees inside them. So I'm unsure as to how we're going to go from here, but let's head back to where there are a number of visitors waiting for me over there in uh, my wheat farm, as always. Once they have disappeared, we're going to just get a nice little area outside and we will set up our two bee farms, fingers crossed. Okay, so resources gathered, we're going to start building the first of our two bee farms here. I'll build one and then once I've shown you how I'm going to build it and, and what it looks like, I will build the other one when you guys uh, sort of aren't looking. But it's a really, really simple build indeed. So going to first take some flowers just to mark out my area two three four five uh one two three four five there we go that is our area now we need to take a beehive an observer and a dispenser we're also going to want a building block and uh, i've crafted up some scaffolding while i was waiting as well but we're going to place our beehive there. We're going to place our dispenser not like that because that is the wrong way. And that is the wrong way. Good start knock. I get the feeling I should have placed the dispenser first. This, uh, we, we've got to be careful here because the bees will start to come out. And then we're going to observe the honey block. We will place that to there and then we're going to for a start just put some shears in the dispenser and that should dispense us some honeycomb so now we need to block this in also I've just realized I don't have anything to collect anything at the moment. I also don't think I've got enough glass here. So I'm going to need to go and get some sand. Great. Some resource gathering later. Okay, so we have glassed off the entire side and the top of this bee farm um i mean it's only like a one hive thing we can probably expand this if we need to in the future but i just want to get something up and running as soon as we're having kind of like a bit of a quote-unquote sticky episode i guess we'll call this okay so now we're going to lay the foundations for our minecart track that's going to run underneath this we're just going to do this real quickly like this rails can be a real pig in minecraft i done made a mistake Okay, I have corrected my mistake. As you can see, uh, it's probably not the most orthodox way of doing it, but we have a complete track that runs around this entire area. It's a little bit more than we actually need in regards to like the coverage here. But what we're going to do now is we're going to dig an area here. Uh, we don't need to, but I'm going to put in a double hopper here. Actually, we don't need a double hopper at all, do we? Let's put the double chest in first. Then we just need to replace our rails here and here. 
And then we need to put in a couple of powered rails. I've brought four along with me here. Put one there and one there. We do actually need some redstone torches though. So let me go and grab a couple of those. Actually, to save us using redstone torches, we're going to use redstone blocks. Now we just need to place our minecart on here. And if we give it a little tiny tap, does that go all the way around? It does. Huzzah! Just to sort of explain what's happening here, if you're not sure. There's an observer watching the beehive. So when there is a state change on the beehive, the observer should give a pulse to the dispenser, which has got some shears in it. The shears should then get rid or, or harvest the beehive. Now, I wonder if, because it's already full, it's not detecting any state changes. I think you can shear these manually. But you've got to be careful because the bees will get aggroed, I think. Yep, there we go. The bee, the bees got angry. Please go back, my bee friends. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you angry. Okay, they don't appear to be aggroed at me anymore. Which is good. And our... Oh, no, what happened? He died. What? Well, that's disastrous. Hey. My bee friend. Come with me. Come with me. Maybe when you... Oh, hold on a minute. That makes perfect sense, what just happened to the bee, right? Because think about it in real life. When a... Oh, oh sorry, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... When a bee stings you in real life, it basically dies. So it uses it as like a last ditch attempt to kind of defend itself and defend the hive, right? So that would actually make sense. Hey there, Mr. Bee. I have a friend for you. Would you like to come and find them? Yes. Oh, oh, come on. Bee, 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 bee. Mr. Bee, come on. Come on. Excellent. We have two bees stowed quite nicely. So now we play the waiting game. Now I'm actually going to go out on a limb here and say I'm not very good at waiting. <laughs> so I actually decided to build the other one of these machines while I was just sat around twiddling my thumbs and I've tried to make it a little bit pretty. I mean, albeit it's not the best, but this is what we have. So we've got both beehives set up and as you can see, it's collecting honeycombs and bottles. Now there is one thing that's like really weird about this and the glass bottles are coming out empty. So for some reason on the glass bottle side of it, there's for some reason there's a bit of a flaw for whatever reason. I'm going to try and get to the bottom of that. Let's just cover that up real quick. I forgot that the hoppers would uh, collect the glass. But yeah, there's, I don't know what's going on there. I'll have to look at that in between episodes, but we have a fully functioning, for now at least, honeycomb and honey bottle machine. And that guys is going to bring us to the end of this episode. This episode has been filmed over probably about three weeks. I actually had a week's vacation after finishing the slime chunk finding and this is sort of like a little bit of a bonus just to sort of get me back into it, finish off the episode and have everything running quite nicely. But thank you very much everybody for watching. I really appreciate support. If you've got any ideas as to why I'm getting empty bottles out of that beehive, do please let me know. But in the next episode, we will be looking at building a fully functional slime farm. So make sure you come back and tune in for that one. But until then, guys, I've been Nock. You've been awesome. Bye.